Hey everyone, Danielle from Peas Love and Carrots back again on kosher.com with another holiday mystery box special for you. I'm not sure who this one's from or what this is, so let's just pop it open and dive right in. We have another note. Dear Danielle, so matzo went viral a few thousand years ago. <laughs> we think you should come up with a new sensation. Maybe less hard on the stomach. <laughs> Thanks, lovekosher.com. So I'm literally competing with the Jews in the desert. No pressure, Danielle. Um, almond flour, like it's not Pesach without almond flour, so that's good. Um, Ooh, wine. Just for the record, nobody said it has to go in the food, so it can also go in my belly. That's fair. Tuscanini tomato paste is kosher for pesa. Life changing. Amazing. Dried apricots. Not sure where this is going, folks. Potatoes, okay, well, it's pota it's pesa. So potatoes and almond flour, fine. And that's not it. We have our protein, which is, oh, oh, I get to choose one protein. That's so fun. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I love lamb chops. I love lamb chops. Or ground beef, shoot. Okay, I have a really good idea of where to go from here. I'm gonna run over to my pantry, grab a few extra ingredients, come back, and we're gonna make this dinner. All right, I'm back from my pantry. I got everything I needed. I did decide to go with the ground beef, but I think because I saw the lamb, my mind went into like a Mediterranean mode because of the lamb and the apricots. So I am gonna tell you that I'm using ground beef, but if you wanna use ground lamb, go for it. It will work perfectly. I'm really excited about this. We are going with a Middle Eastern style meatballs. I think it's really fun. It's really nice to be able to change up the flavors of your meat and potatoes on Pesach. Like we do it so many times, so many nights in a row. Bringing in a whole different flavor profile will really sort of break up the monotony of the meat and potatoes business happening. So let's just jump right in. The first thing we want to do is we want to prep our ingredients to add to our meatball mixture. So we're going to do our meatballs last. We want to slice an onion. We're just going to set our onion to the side and now we're going to cut up our apricots. Apricots do need to be checked, so you're just gonna take your knife, you're gonna run it through the apricot horizontally, hold it up to the light, give it a check. When you're good to go, we're just gonna cut it into thin strips. There we go, just like that. It's gonna add a really, really nice sweetness to our meatballs. We have this, we have this. Now, we need to make our meatball mixture. I have my chopped meat here. So I discovered this a few years ago. Potatoes make meatballs amazing. So that's what I'm using because that's what was in the mystery box. All right, so I'm just gonna grate this up. All right, I have about a cup of my grated potato here. I'm just adding that right to my meatball mixture. To this, I'm going to add one lightly beaten egg. I don't like to put too much egg. I just think it, I don't know, I don't love the consistency that it gives the meatball. So one is just enough. You just want to beat it really well. Otherwise, you get those like hard boiled like egg white pieces in your meatballs. So you want to really, really mix that. And we're going to go in with some salt some pepper, and a little bit of tomato paste. I know, it's crazy, it's a sauce ingredient, but actually it's gonna deepen the flavor of the meat. It's gonna add like a little bit of acidity and umami to the mixture. It's gonna be really delicious. All right, before we mix this up and start making our meatballs and frying them, we have one last thing to do. We need to bloom our saffron for our meatballs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill one cup with boiling hot water. Okay. We're gonna add our saffron to the boiling hot water and this is gonna actually bloom the saffron. You wanna take a spatula, you wanna take the saffron and smush it against the side of the cup. 
that's gonna actually help get the flavor out of your saffron. Just like that, stir it up, set this aside. Now this is gonna sit until we're ready to use it. All right, now it's time to make our meatballs. Before I even start mixing this whole mixture up, I'm just gonna get my fire on to medium high heat and we're gonna let that, we're gonna let that sit and preheat. Now, I know, I still didn't use the almond flour. That's because I'm using it in the best way ever. Time to get in there, okay. Really important, we do not wanna overwork our chopped meat. Overworking our meat is going to make it tough. I'm gonna get in there. We're gonna use sort of like a this motion as if your hands were a whisk so that we're not squeezing the meat into our hands and we're just getting everything fully incorporated. There we go. All right, and now it's time to make our meatballs. The first thing we wanna do is Take some neutral oil, whatever you use on Pesach, walnut oil, canola oil, whatever you use is fine, just neutral. We're not using olive oil here, and we're gonna add it to the pan, just a little bit, not too much. There is fat in the meat, so we don't need too much. We just wanna get it going, because we wanna get that good crispy meatball outside. Now, how are we gonna get that good crispy meatball outside? Oh, the almond flour, I remember. That's right, dip it in our almond flour, just like that. We're gonna put it right into the pan. I'm not talking because I want you to hear that sizzle. So once your meatballs are crispy on the outside but still raw on the inside, we're gonna start building our sauce now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with my sliced dried apricots and my onions. Get those in there. You see what's happening. We're building like a really, really flavorful, flavorful dish here. We're gonna go in with a sprinkle of salt, a little pepper. Very carefully using a wooden spoon, we're gonna just slowly start nudging our meatballs around so that the onions can touch the pan. All right, and now we're gonna just let this do its thing. But before we do, we're gonna add two tablespoons. You know what, make it three, this stuff is good. Three tablespoons of our Tuscany meat tomato paste. Let's get that in there. This way it will have time to caramelize before we build the sauce because the more you allow the tomato paste to cook before you add liquid, the deeper the flavor gets. And now that this is all mixed up, we're gonna just take your foil, carefully use your hands. You could use a kitchen towel. You don't wanna burn your hands off. It's probably a good idea, actually. Use a kitchen towel. Cover the pan, and we're just gonna let that chill. We're gonna let the onion soften. We're gonna let the meatballs cook through. We're gonna come back in about 10 minutes. I'm probably gonna check it once in the middle, and then we're gonna build our sauce. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. The house smells Ridiculous. Can you see what's happening? I stirred them once or twice throughout the process. Look at how soft those onions got, how much flavor we have going on here. Just gonna turn up the heat, and now it's time to build our sauce. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going in with our red wine. Not too much, just a little. Gonna round out all the flavors. Scrape up any bits from the bottom of the pan and you'll have really good bits because of the almond flour. The smell from the wine combined with the meat and the onions and the tomato and everything going on in here is instantaneously mouth-watering, mouth-watering. All right, we gave the wine about a minute for the alcohol to cook off. Now we're gonna go in with our saffron. Just gonna give it a stir because I wanna make sure that the stems don't get stuck on the side of the cup and we're gonna pour in our saffron broth. And to just round out the sauce, we're gonna go in with a little bit of stock. I have beef, so that's what I'm using, but you can definitely use chicken stock. Honestly, there's so much flavor in here. If you wanna use some water, go ahead. It will still be delicious. All right, we're just gonna give this all a stir. By the way, you can't even see the apricots in here. They like totally disintegrated. There, that's an apricot. You see that right there? and they got so soft and delicious. We're gonna bring this mixture to a boil. There we go, bubbles. We're gonna reduce the heat to low. 
and we're just gonna let this go. I'm gonna let this go for about 45 minutes to an hour. If you wanna let it go for like two hours, go for it. If you wanna make it for your Seder and put it up and let it cook the whole time on a low simmer, you can do that. Stick it on the plata, they're meatballs. They're just gonna get softer. Don't worry about it, it's delicious. All right, I'll be back in an hour. It's been an hour, the smell is intoxicating. Every room of the house has been affected by the smell. That's how crazy it is. Oh my gosh. Can you see what's happening here? Can you see this? So we're gonna get these into a bowl. Oh my gosh, look at how tender they look. I mean, it, they're perfect because they're not falling apart, but they look like they could fall apart because they're so soft from the grated potatoes and from the braising. And look at that color. Look at the color of that liquid. Look at that. Amazing. This is so gorgeous. I can't. Okay, and there we go. Our Moroccan braised meatballs. All right, I can't resist. I'm going in for a bite. Oh my gosh, it's really tender. You could feel when you put the fork through it. It's fork tender. <laughs> Come on, that was good. I'm gonna grab some onions because I love cooked onions. They are amazing. They are amazing. This was the best mystery box. They are delicious. Holy moly, serve these with crispy potatoes, serve these with mashed potatoes. Don't serve them with anything at all. Definitely serve them though because they are so good. All right, everybody, I'm Danielle from Peas Loving Carrots, and I'm so happy to be back here on kosher.com, and so happy we got to make these meatballs because they are definitely going on my Pesach table. I want to wish you all a beautiful Pesach and a Chag Kasher V'Sameach. Need some help with drying dishes.